those who are still in this greatest generation who are now in the process of passing on, of dying, um, as they see the, the decline uh, of their congregations, they knew what it was like when they were full. Uh, they knew what it was like not to be 10 people rattling around in a sanctuary that seats 150, 300, 1,000. They want to set up endowments to preserve their legacy. The assets from those endowments would be the sale of the facility. But when you're in Lima, Ohio, or Parkersburg, West Virginia, or Sumter, South Carolina, or Kokomo, Indiana, or Niagara Falls, New York, it's very difficult to sell that facility. So this is an issue that uh, agonizes them, we work with them, and uh, it's uh, ultimately to preserve their legacy. Even if it's not used for a religious purpose, I believe it still stands as a symbol of religion because it still looks like a church no matter what it might be used for and it's still a reminder of people to people uh, that there is a reality beyond what they see every day. The cost of converting the building for legal office use is ultimately deemed prohibitive by a vast majority of our prospective tenants and some of these buildings are physically located within the parish complex to the point where selling them is either impractical or, or you, you can't uh, obtain a subdivision. That's been a major issue for us, is uh, residential buildings and the inability to find uh, a good user for those buildings. So maybe 20 years ago when, when 10 religious staff would occupy and now you have one person who's uh, coming close to retirement. There has been some talk about maybe in the, in the smaller communities of possibly uh, having different denominations. and. Uh, Catholic and say another denomination sharing a church uh, that may happen sometime down the road and I'm not saying that that's going to happen I'm just saying I've heard conversations about that.